Today, we're gonna to be looking at the ice tower cooler for the Raspberry Pi. Stay tuned. Today, we're gonna to be looking at what's supposed to be the best active cooler for the Raspberry Pi, and that's the ice tower cooler. So to test this, I went ahead and got myself a brand new eight gigabyte Pi 4 and have it preloaded with Raspbian OS. I went ahead and already did some preliminary testing on this one, and it runs at about 65 Celsius with no cooler at all, with the CPU maxed out. So let's get to unboxing this ice tower cooler and see what it comes with. So the ice tower cooler comes in a relatively small box and it's a relatively small cooler for a relatively small computer. So that actually makes sense. So let's open the box up and see what all it comes with. So here we have an instruction manual so we can actually install the cooler and it's actually a nice looking manual. It's a nice looking color manual that goes through and describes each step that we need to take to install it, so that's nice. So the next thing that we have in the cooler is we have all the hardware and thermal pads that we're gonna to need to install it. We have the bracketry that we're gonna to need to attach it to the Raspberry Pi, as well as an acrylic plate that we can use for the bottom of the Pi. This will be a great addition so I don't have to keep the pie sitting on my workbench all the time. And finally, we have the cooler itself. Now the cooler is a tiny little cooler. However, considering what it's going on, it's actually quite large. So what we have is we have two heat pipes coming off of the base up through an aluminum finned heat sink and two wires that connect the fan to the GPIO cables on the Raspberry Pi. And I believe this fan is actually RGB. So now that we've opened it up, let's go ahead and install it on the Pi. So now that we have our Raspberry Pi ready to go, we need to prepare the heat sink to install it. So what we need to do first is attach the brackets to the heat sink. So let's open this package up here. And it's real important that these things get installed the way that it's pictured. So we want our first bracket to go on this side here, just like this. I guess we should get our screws out so we'll be ready for it. One thing I forgot to show in the box was this included screwdriver. It seems like a lot of stuff for the Raspberry Pi comes with screwdrivers. It's like people who use Raspberry Pis don't have tools. I don't know if that's the case, but it is welcome to have new screwdrivers. All right, then the second bracket going to fit on just like this. This is definitely the smallest cooler I've ever installed before. It looks like these screws are easy to cross thread so be careful when you're installing it. All right, so there we go. We have the brackets installed. Now it's time to connect standoffs here. So what we're gonna wanna do is take four of these standoffs with these little provided nuts here. And attach these to the cooler itself. This can be challenging if you have big fingers. Of 
Looks like the easiest way to do this is to hold the nut and then actually screw the standoff into the nut. Now we're on the last one here. All right, and there we go. Now we have the standoffs installed. We should be ready to mount this on the pie. So now the next step we take is to put the thermal pad on the Raspberry Pi. So there's usually these little clear pieces you have to take off here. And then set this thermal pad right down on the SOC. Just like that. And then make sure you take the other clear piece off the other side. Sometimes that's easier said than done. I'm going to try to do that without taking the thermal pad off. Sometimes it's a two finger job. There we go. So now we're ready to mount the cooler onto the pie. And to do that, we mount it with the fan facing the IO on the side right there. And it sets down just like that. And then it looks like it attaches to the pie with thumb screws from the other side. So I'm going to lightly screw these in until I get all four of them in and then we'll tighten them all up. Alright, there we go. So now I'm going to go around and tighten all these standoffs up here. All right, and there we go. We now have a cooler on our Raspberry Pi. Now the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is hook up the power cables to the fan to the GPIO plugs. And the way we wanna plug this one in is the power side goes right on the last pin on the inside and the ground wire goes to the second to the last pin on the outside. just like that. All right, now the last step is to install our acrylic sheet for the bottom of the pie. So we're gonna do that right now. So the first thing you should do is pull the protective cover off of the sheet here, at least on the side facing the pie. There we go. And then the instructions say to use these little screws here to screw it into the standoffs that we just attached. So like before, I'm gonna get all four of these screws started first and then I'll tighten them all down. And there we go. We now have our ice tower cooler installed on our Raspberry Pi. So let me move things around and we can get this thing fired up. So I have it fired up and I have to say I ran into a problem. And let me explain real quick. First off, don't listen to anything I say because during that installation, I messed up big time and the pie wouldn't start up afterwards. And it turned out I actually hooked the fan up wrong. I hooked the 3.3 volt and the five volt together. And if you notice that in the video, then well, give me a break. It was, it was the way it looked like it was hooked up in the picture. So anyway, after looking at the Katana Kit GPIO layout, I realized what I did wrong. What you need to do is hook the fan up to the very first outside plug, that's five volts, and the third in, which is ground. And let me show you that here. So if you look at the back right here, it hooks up to the very first outside pin and the third to the last outside pin as ground. So once you hook it up that way, it should run fine with no problems at all. Now, 
On that note, the fan is actually pretty quiet. It's not too bad. However, if you move the 5 volt to the 3.3 volt, it will actually run the RPMs down and make it even quieter. However, at the expense of not cooling as well. And since the whole purpose of this is to cool the Raspberry Pi well, we're going to leave it on 5 volts. So after your finish your install, you have a lot of extra pieces left over, and this is actually handy. It comes with one of each hardware piece, a screw, a standoff, and a nut extra after you're done. And this is really nice because inevitably one of these things always hits the floor and it's nice to have an extra. And you also have two extra thermal pads. So if you ever want to move this to another Raspberry Pi, you have an extra thermal pad. So I already have a temperature test going. I have Stress NG running the CPUs all the way up to max and I'm monitoring the temperatures. So far we're sitting at 45 Celsius. So that's a 20 Celsius drop from before. However, I'm going to let this run for 45 minutes and we'll see where we're at. I went ahead and let this thing run for 45 minutes and it never got over 45 C. So that's a 20 C drop in temperature from no cooling at all to the ice tower cooler. And I would call that pretty impressive. To be a little bit more thorough, I could have probably used the stock heat sinks and seen how they performed. However, they wouldn't have performed anywhere near this. So I'm going to forgo that for this test. Now, is it worth it? Is it worth buying a $30 cooler for a Raspberry Pi, considering that a two gig Raspberry Pi 4 goes for about 35 bucks? So this cooler costs about as much as a Raspberry Pi. Well, it depends on what you're using it for and it depends on what you're doing. So if you want the best cooler for a Raspberry Pi, then I don't know where else you would go. I think this thing is in a league of its own. It does however have a little brother that's a low profile cooler and that might be more to your fitting as well because one of the downsides to this one right here is, is i don't think you're going to get a very good case to fit this thing into because honestly it's <laughs> kind of huge it's about a little over twice the height of the raspberry pi itself so i doubt it's going to fit into many cases i am however going to try to fit it into a canna case and see how it works the raspberry pi 4 canna cases actually have the inside opened out i won't be able to have the pie top on it but i do think that it'll work it'll just kind of look like one of those hot rods with the engine sticking out of the hood so i'm going to give that a try and see how it works for a case but other than that I'm really happy with this cooler. I think it's gonna work great and it's gonna do what we need it to do in our overclocking video that's gonna be coming soon. I'm gonna show you how to overclock the Raspberry Pi 4 and for that, you have to have active cooling. So this should take cooling out of the equation when we're trying to do our overclocks. So if this video was helpful to you, then please like this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I post a new video every week. Have a great day.